Hi and welcome to PhotoWalk Pro Tutorials. My name is Jeff and today's tutorial is going to show you how to achieve that grunge look in three easy steps. Alright, step one. It's actually kind of a mini step one. We're going to duplicate this background layer and to do that I'm going to use Command J and that gives me a nice quick duplication of that layer. Now step one involves applying a filter to this that doesn't get a lot of use. Uh, but it's one that I use every now and then for this effect especially, and that's the high pass filter. Now it doesn't get a lot of love because most people open it up and they see this screen pop up and they're like, oh my god, that sucks, and they quickly cancel out. But um, this filter actually is pretty good for this effect, especially when you see what happens when you apply it. Now this is a high res image, uh, a fairly high res, it's from a D300. So I'm going to use my radius of about 10. Now if you had a lower res image, um, you might want to go with something around a radius of 5 or so. You kind of play with it and see what the effect looks like when you're done and then make changes as necessary. So by clicking on OK, now the next step is to go up here and change the blend mode. Now, as you can see over here, the blend modes kind of rest up here at the top of your layers palette. And as I click normal, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select overlay. Now there's three of them that I use for this technique depending on the image. And I just kind of play with it and see which one fits. There's hard light, soft light, and overlay. I'm going to go ahead and click on overlay. and Let me zoom back out. Now you can see the effect that that high pass filter has. If I turn this off and turn it back on, and I'll tell you what, even better, let me zoom in on this guy right here. There you go. Now let me turn that filter off and then turn it back on again. And you can see it gives a nice, it's almost a sharpening with a, a nice contrast, especially in edges. It gives that dark edge contrast, which is really good for that, for that grunge effect. So let me zoom back out just a little bit here. All right, maybe one more. There we go. Okay, now the next uh, step in this, this is step two. We're going to do the same thing we just did with that first step, and we're going to duplicate that background layer. So I'm going to drag it down here to that new layer icon, and now I have to put it on top. So I'm going to drag it above layer one. So now I've got my background sitting up there. It kind of blocks the view of layer one effect, but that's okay because once I change the blend mode, it'll be an additive type process. Okay, so the, the next step with this background copy is to desaturate it. Now, there's a couple different ways you can desaturate. You can go to uh, Hue and Saturation under the Image Adjustments and change it to, uh, you know, just grab that scrubby slider and slide it all the way to the left. Or you can just do a quick keyboard shortcut, which is the Command-Shift-U or Control-Shift-U on your PC, and that desaturates your image nice and quick. Uh, my my Intent is not to make a black and white image. If it was, I would certainly do it a different way than desaturate because it doesn't do a great, great thing for black and whites. But it will work nicely for this next effect, which is kind of to make our images a little bit more dull and muted. And we do that by changing the blend mode on this layer. So we're going to go and change this to overlay. And by changing it to overlay, you can see what it does to these colors. It kind of Some of them kind of pop a little bit more, but some of them are a little bit more muted. And it just gives that nice effect. So here's a before, and there's after. All right, and it also adds a little bit more contrast, which is kind of nice for this effect. All right, the final step that we're going to use here, this is step three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, now I want to, here's, the, here's the, the final step, and this is a dodge and burn. Uh, effect. But you know what, I don't want to dodge and burn directly in the image because that's kind of destructive and it also it's hard to undo or to make changes later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dodge and burn on its own layer. So I'm going to click on a new layer icon and I'm going to fill that. So I'm going to go up here to edit and fill. And I'm going to fill that with 50% gray. Now when I do that it just fills it with gray and you can't see a thing. Once again it's our blend modes to the rescue. We're going to change that blend mode to overlay. Now at 50% gray, there is no change to your image. The way you affect that change is by painting either with a black to burn in or a white to dodge on your image. Uh, the one thing I would suggest is you just start with a low opacity on your brush. Now mine's set to about 50% here. My color is set to black and I have my brush tool. If you, if you start right off with a, let me go ahead and do 100% here. If you start off with 100%, you can see it's just way too dark. All right, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But if you start off with a lower opacity on your brush, it's say about 50%, now you get a little bit more control, and you can see I can get that nice nice darkening. Uh, you can also uh, change your size of your brush. You can do that. Now I'm going to paint around him because I want to isolate him from the rest of the image. 
And as after I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and use that right bracket, and I'm going to go ahead and make that brush really large so I can really paint in quickly on these areas here. Now, if I click off these other layers, you can see exactly what I'm doing to my image is I'm painting. Now, it's, a, it's an additive process, so as you're painting in here, it's going to darken these areas even more and more. Okay, let me turn these back on. Okay, and I'm just going to keep painting. Now, I want these columns to be a little bit darker here, so I'm going to paint over them again, and it makes them a little bit darker, and then again, and then I'll make, make them a little bit darker again. Now, that looks pretty good to me, but you know what? These columns are just still too light to me, and I want them to be a little bit darker. So you know what I'm going to do? Um, okay, this is step 3.1, and that is I'm going to drag this layer down to my new layer icon and duplicate it. Now you can see how much darker it made everything. It really kind of it screwed things up over in this, over in these windows and everything. You're almost getting a little posterization, but that's okay because I'm going to put a layer mask on top of it, and I'm going to put a mask. I'm going to kind of invert that mask. So I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key and click on the Add Layer Mask button. Now instead of a white mask, it puts a black mask on there. That black mask uh, uh, painting with white is going to reveal that that newest layer. And that's all I want to do is reveal just a little bit, and that's right on this column right here. So I've got a white brush, and I've got to paint on this black. And you know what? I'm going to start off at about 50%, and I'm going to just start painting in. And you can see right here, and let me go ahead and, and move this over a little bit. You can see that by painting on here, I'm actually darkening these up because I'm revealing that, tarp, that top layer, which actually duplicated that, that nice effect. All right, and I think that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and... Let's do this. Okay, now here is a quick, uh, let me go ahead and make this like this. Okay, this is before, right here, and uh, make it easier for you to see. So here's a before of my image right here, and um, let's go full screen. That's before, and let's go look at our after here. Let me get this out of the way too. There we go. Let's look at our after, and that would be right here. So there's our after, a nice little grunge effect. Uh, go ahead and give it a try, see what you think. Thanks a lot. I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro.